Hey, today we're gonna to talk about bailing hay on a small farm and I'm gonna go over my equipment and how much it costs. Hey, welcome back to the farm. Uh, I'm gonna kind of go over the equipment I use to bail hay and uh, cause I'm probably gonna be bailing next week. Uh, it all depends on the weather. I could actually start today, but it rained really hard today. And so I think I got two days. You need about three or four good days of dry weather. So I'm gonna go over my equipment before I get started. That way when I film, I don't have to go back over it in detail. But I've got uh, three pieces of equipment that I use now. I've got uh, I've got a round better, but I'm gonna sell it and I got another hay rack and I'm gonna sell it. So I'm not gonna go over, over the, the, I'm not gonna go over those. I'm just gonna go over what I use. Uh, primary now, I want square bales because of my goats and uh, probably get a, maybe a milk cow here in the future. So we're gonna go Strictly square bales, and we're not going to sell any of it. Uh, I used to do like 50 something acres, and I had this equipment that I did, and I'll talk about it. But and I rail bailed all that, round bailed all that, and we sold most of it. And uh, but we'd keep a few every now and then, but mainly we uh, sold the round bales. Of course, the first thing I'm going to use is this uh, sickle bar mower, it's a New Holland 451, uh, it's a seven foot cut, it's a belt drive. Now the first sickle bar or more I had, had that old Pittman arm. It was a uh, piece of wood that went back and forth like this. Uh, if you can avoid one of those and you need something inexpensive, try to get a belt drive. Uh, I don't know another manufacturer that makes a belt drive. Right off the top of my head, this is the ones in my area uh, that we could get. And I actually traded a canoe for this and I had $200 in the canoe, but usually these go for around six or six to $800 in my area this had very low use this was looked brand new when i got it and i probably had it for um, probably 10 or 12 years i put several cutter bars on it and uh, it's got little knives on it right here and how it, how it works it goes back and forth this right here goes back and forth and these knives they're called sections actually cut the grass and uh, i've had this set of sections on there for probably oh probably five or six years i got these from a company this whole thing it unbolts and i had this whole piece bought from a company in nebraska that's like 80 bucks and i mean it has really done the job for me uh it kind of needs replaced right now but since i'm just mowing like three or four acres i just slow down a little bit and don't worry about it i don't want to pay the money right now but i've cut a lot of hay with this thing right here and uh i mean you could move up to a disc bind or a really a uh, disc mower you know is probably the new thing i don't know how much they are now when, when i priced a new one back in the day it was like eight thousand dollars so you know i got two hundred dollars in this one so i mean i've made a lot of money with this so well i guess my point is you don't have to spend a lot of money if you're just a small time farmer like me you just got i probably got what four acres i'm probably going to try to cut some across the road in my neighbor so probably six acres and i'm going to cut this year you get by with this kind of thing right here, especially, but you know, I cut 50 something acres with this piece of machine right here and never had a problem with it. It's a good piece of equipment. Like I said, uh, it's a new Holland 451. Uh, try to go with a belt drive. They make it in nine foot too, but this is a seven foot. So after you get it cut, we let it dry for several days and we bail it. I mean, uh, we rake it with a hay rake and let's go over and look at this one. So this is a Massey Ferguson 35 hay rake. And uh, this is my second Massey Ferguson hay rake I've had in my lifetime. And uh, I really like it. I, I like it a lot better than the New Holland. I got a New Holland 256. Uh, it's a good rake and I got five, I gave $500 for that one and I gave $500 for this one with new tires on it. And, uh, but this one rakes better. It's a little heavier. It don't bounce. You get in a little rough spot and uh, just does all around good job. So I like the Massey Ferguson better than the New Holland. So I'm gonna sell a new Holland, I'm gonna keep this one. But I had two when we was doing all that uh, uh, hay and my son would take one rake on with the Ford tractor and I'd take this with the John Deere. And we, you know, it cuts your time in half. You do a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of acreage. We had, to, we had two of them going, but this works off the ground. This wheel turns, it turns this chain, turns in this mechanism over to the little PTO and it, it turns the rake. Now they make one that goes on a three point, three point hitch. Uh, I wouldn't fool with one of those. This is a lot easier to hook up. You just pull to it and you know line it up, drop your pin in. 
anything with a three point hitch we like to I like to try to avoid so but this is a good one the 256 I'm not saying it is not a bad I mean they made they've sold probably thousands and thousands and thousands I'm just saying I like the Massey better than the New Holland on the rake side this is real good and then it, what it does after it dries and you rake it and this thing turns it'll pile that hay in a wind it's called a wind row and then you come by with your baler so let's go look at the baler I'm using now so the square bale better I'm using now is a John Deere 24T. It's probably from the 60s. And uh, if you look at the newer John Deere bellers, there's not much difference. It's just wider and you can throw a lot more hay in it. Now this is slow. You can't probably second gear is what I bell hay with. So that's the only drawback to an older machine. You have to kind of go slower, but I've had a lot of good luck out of this. And I don't, I bought this, uh, I gave $700 for this. so. Really, I'm in $1,400 in my haying equipment, and uh, you know, good good hay, good organic hay like I'm gonna have, $10 a bale. So it don't take long to make that up. And this be, I haven't, I've done quite a bit, but not quite as much, quite as, much as my round beller with this. I've probably done, I don't know, six or seven hundred bales with it. I did about 100 last year. I'm gonna try to do about 250 this year. So I'll film all that when we're going. But this is, like I said, this is a, I really like this. I didn't like it at first when I first got it, but after I learned how to adjust it and everything, cause I first had a New Holland 68, which is even older than this one. This is from the late fifties probably. And uh, I got rid of it, it, it was wore out anyway. And uh, I was looking for a hay belter. I really want a New Holland 273, which is probably one of the best square belters made. And uh, I came across this and I got it. And, once I got it adjusted and everything and find out what kind of string. Now these old bellers, you can't use that new poly string, the cheap stuff, it won't tie. So I have to use a uh, the old uh, uh, Brazilian twine with it. You can't use the new poly twine. I can't even use that on my round beller. It wouldn't even take it. So I had to learn that and I, I think that was probably one of my problems. But one good thing about John Deere now, I can, get par I can go to the John Deere de dealership and get parts for this, even though it's made in the 60s or whatever because I broke a, a knotter on the back or the bill the hook bill is what it's called it's part of the knotter and I went to the John Deere dealership and they got it for me in like two days and, I mean it's kind of pricey but if you need something I mean it was better than making payments so anyway uh, I'm gonna clean it out a little bit and my problem is I don't have a shed to keep this in and hopefully I'll get to rectify that someday but this is a good this is a good little machine here. So I would say this, a 24T, like a 336 John Deere, a New Holland 273 is really good. Uh, 276 is pretty good. Uh, I think up to, uh, I seen a 315 on Marketplace the other day in New Holland. I don't know much about those, but uh, it was $3,500. And I've seen a John Deere 336 for $3,500. I wish I'd bought it. And uh, Massey Perkins makes it pretty good, like a 124 is a good one you still get parts for it and uh probably a massive ferguson 12 which is probably the same vintage as this you just can't go as fast but anyway it picks it up picks the hay up once we get into a windrow picks it up and this thing turns throws it into the bell chamber and uh there's like a ram right here and this thing will go around is like a big ram and it compresses that uh, hay into a bale and then back here it ties it and here's the knotters and all that this is the most if you're going to get one this is the most important part of it right here the little piece I replaced is right down in there and it, uh, it fit right in there they knew what this was doing so uh, I mean I lube this thing up really really good before I get started baling so I lube all this chain all these fittings and everything it has got a ton of grease fittings on it. It's an hour, seems like grease fittings on it. But anyway, I've got where I really like this one. I, I really like it a lot better than the old one I had, the old New Holland. So uh, anyway, I gave 700, I got 1400 in all this equipment. And uh, you know, we'll do 250 bales this year, hopefully. We got some great looking hay over there I showed you in the last video. So anyway, if you're thinking about maybe getting into your own hay, you want to be self-sufficient, that's the only reason I don't too, because I don't want to depend on nobody else, because you know how it goes. Uh, uh, 
those, you know, you get to counting on somebody, somebody come by with more money, offer more money for that hay, and you, you're out in the cold. So I pretty much want to be self-sufficient with all my, well, we try to be with our operations as best we could. I wish we could grow our own feed. I just don't have enough room for that. Okay. Uh, have any questions, leave a comment, and I'll answer, answer all the comments. Uh, hope this was informative. You can kind of see my reasoning on why I bail my own hay, and uh, hopefully next week we'll have a video out me cutting and uh, bailing and all that stuff, and I'll put it on there. I've got an old video, probably one of the first ones we made, maybe episode number eight or something, where we did it, and uh, got a lot of got a, got a lot of good playtime. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. Uh, hit that little subscribe button over there, help us grow. We're trying to get to a thousand subscribers. Uh, we appreciate everybody watching. Leave a comment if you got a question. Send me an email. I answer all emails and comments. Support your local farmer. And we'll see you down here in the farm in the next video.